Well, as investigators search for answers, folks living around that area are surveying the damage, and there's plenty of it. Uh, you've seen these canisters <laughs> basically turned into missiles, hitting everything from fire trucks to fences to people. Uh, for that part of the story, let's get to Pamela Osborne. A look at this landscape uh, that, that is behind Pamela right now. It, it, you look like you're on some kind of strange planet, Pam. And it kind of feels that way, too. You know, we were out here last night, and there were hundreds of people who were drawn to this area, really as close as they could get by the sound and the feel of those explosions. They just wanted to see for themselves. And now you can see for yourself, this is all that's left of that business. Even a few minutes after noon today, we felt and heard yet another explosion. There isn't much left of that building where it all started. But I want you now to take a look at the ground. These exploded container parts parts were raining down, causing damage and even killed a man, as Rob mentioned, who was a quarter of a mile away from here when he was hit. Biggest problem is a very sharp pieces of metal. When the canister blows up, it doesn't blow on the seams. It blows very jagged. They're sharp. We saw and heard of pieces of sharp, twisted metal in full canisters, even punching through fences, landing on businesses and in neighborhoods. Couldn't believe it. In the Imagine all kinds of things when you see that. Dan Howery lives less than a mile away from the epicenter of those explosions. The whole sky was lit up, and then uh, that went on for probably an hour and 15, 20 minutes. He says people came out to his street to watch it all play out. Before it was over, the bomb squad was there too, after some of the debris landed just a few doors down. It was a projectile, about that much sticking out of the the ground. And this is what he meant by projectile. You can see these containers all over the place, some of them small, some of them even have the name goo on the side, others larger and intact, really, and other pieces, as you can see, just completely torn to shreds. Now, I want to draw your attention here to this business. You can see uh, the damage to the side of it there. That is from some of that exploded material debris that came out of here. We actually got a look at the damage inside. We'll bring you that story tonight at 6 o'clock. For now, reporting live in Clinton Township. I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. How there was only one fatality exactly. in this, given what you've shown us, what Rod was showing, I, it's absolutely Incredible. stunning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Pam, our coverage of the fire will continue over this next 90 minutes of news and on ClickOnDetroit.com. Just scan the QR code right there on your screen and you can find in-depth coverage on multiple angles to this tragic fire. That includes what we know about the business, where the investigation stands, and everything we know about the young life lost last night. And as Rod mentioned, you have been helping us tell this story by sharing your videos on my picks. Matthew Skirsky posted this video from his house uh, very close to 15 Mile in Garfield. We've posted a link on how to join the my picks right now on our homepage at clickondetroit.com. Keep them coming.